Good morning guys, Dragon Man here. A couple more days we open up the museum and uh, we're pretty excited. Everything is 100% ready and uh, we just can't wait. Uh, April 14th, 10 o'clock Sunday, only a few days away. Let me show you the most popular room that most people want to check out. My Nazi room. Follow me. This here is my Nazi room and uh, in my museum we have a room for every major war that the U.S. was in all the way back going back to our first president 1789 George Washington. We cover the American Revolutionary War, the Civil War, World War I, World War II, Korea, uh, Vietnam, Iraq, Afghanistan and uh, you won't uh, see a better display than what I display here. This winter I really bought a lot more stuff. It's super packed, the museum. It was packed before, but now it's over packed. I'll show you a lot of the new stuff that I got. Uh, you probably won't even recognize it because everything just melts right in. Okay, this is a typical machine gun bunker. This is the fastest shooting machine gun in World War II, the MG-42, 8 millimeter bullets, a rate of 1,200 a minute. We get the K-98s, we got the MP-40, uh, we got the uh, <coughs> MG-34, and... Uh, you got to keep in mind, these are real guns and real bullets. You go to a government museum, you're not going to see real guns and real bullets. Here, look at the, the bullets I got here, packed, 1938. Look at that, 1938. All original. Everything I have in here is original. Okay, let's come down the line here. Okay, I picked up some more swords. See that? And uh, these are the Nazi uh, swords. 100% original, very good shape. I buy this stuff from uh, collectors from all around the world. I spent over 10 million dollars on everything you're going to see when you come see my museum. I got every Nazi belt buckle, every Nazi canteen, and every Nazi helmet. Okay, check out these helmets. These are called Kaiser helmets. Uh, way back, over 125 years old, some of these helmets. Uh, way before World War One. Okay, over here, uh, I name a bunch of the uniforms. If you guys have any questions when you give, when I give a museum tour, all you have to do is uh, raise your hand. Okay, check it out. We have the artillery sergeant. We got the Panther. That's a tanker. We got the Luftwaffe. That's the Air Force. We got the African Corps. We got the SS uniform. We got the camouflage uniform. Very, very rare. The jet fighter uniform. They only made this uniform for a year and a half. We got the general. We got the SS Gestapo. Okay, you follow me down here. Every Maltese cross from World War I right through World War II. Okay, over here, all original uniforms. That's an original political uniform, like Hitler used to wear when he took over in 1933. These are all pictures here of Hitler wearing a uniform, exactly like that. Okay, over here we have all the gas masks, World War I, World War II, uh, all these helmets with the spikes on them. Uh, they were nicknamed pickle helmets, they're really called Kaiser helmets. Okay, very, very rare, the rarest thing I have in the museum, right here. The Nazi gun belt buckle, and we show you that when uh, you come visit. It shoots three 22 bullets out of the belt buckle. You push the lever on the right side, the three barrels pop out. The firing triggers are on the left side. One, two, three, it'll fire a 22 bullet right through your stomach. And what my, makes mine special, they only made 15 of them, the serial number on mine is number one. That's right. In 2012, I demonstrated it for the Discovery Channel. Okay, over here, all kinds of uh, uniforms, all kinds of hats, all the memorabilia that they had, uh, the Nazis, all the armbands, the landmines, and uh, like I said, you're not going to see a better museum than what I have here. All the uh, bayonets are over here. Uh, we got the Panther Shroud, 88 millimeter bazooka. We got the shells, the bazooka shoots right in the show cabinet. Uh, these are K-98 rifles. It shoots an 8mm bullet. I have about uh, 35 of them. These are the Nazi Red Cross and infantry bicycles over here. The bicycle squads used these, and the Swiss people made these for the Germans. The Swiss, uh, uh, they stayed neutral during World War II. Okay, these are broom handles going back over a hundred years old. 
we got the Lugas, we got the uh, artillery Luga, we got the P-38s. Okay, these are uh, the flare guns, 20 millimeter flare guns with live flares. These are all the different boots they wore. We got the hobnail boots, we got the Luftwaffe boots, the winter boots, the lieutenant's boots, the captain's boots. These are very, very rare boots. They weigh seven and a half pounds each. These were made in the concentration camps in Poland in 1941 for the Germans uh, when they invaded uh, Russia because it was so cold that winter. Okay, we're going to move down here. Hey, look at all. This is a lot of new stuff here I bought. Check it out. Look at all these cabinets. I bought a whole guy's Nazi collection. Okay, in this cabinet here, these are shoulder boards. I have every one of them. It, might, it made my big collection even bigger. Okay, over here, Holocaust display. I got every armband they wore in the Warsaw Ghetto and all the different uh, Holocaust uh, uh, concentration camps. Uh, we got the ice pick where they pulled the uh, body, probably from the gas chamber to the incinerator. Uh, this is a lantern that came back from uh, uh, Dachau, one of the uh, barracks. Probably the last time that candle was lit uh, was probably 80-something years ago. Okay, over here, uh, all original Holocaust uniforms, Sobor concentration camp, Auschwitz, Buchenwald, Dachau, 100% original. And uh, in this little corner here, I got more stuff than the average uh, museum, probably in the United States. Okay, I have 58 cans of Zycon B gas that they gassed the Jews with. Okay, to prove it, they're all dated 1943. If you can see the date up there, 1943. Okay, see, never open. Listen, that's the real deal. And if I was in a legal museum in the state of Colorado with the 501-C3 nonprofit uh, status, uh, I couldn't have this. I'm teaching people about military history. Uh, that's why I'm able to have this. Okay, real fast, I'll show you a couple of things here. Uh, this is what they pulled the bodies out of the gas chamber with. The date, uh, the serial number is 324. This is called the claw. Okay, they go into the gas chamber after the uh, prisoners are dead. They put this around the wrist of the ankle. See, it locks. They pull the body out of the gas chamber, push the middle trigger, and that would release the body. Okay, from that point on, there'd be a whole crew outside waiting to check their mouse for uh, gold teeth. If they had gold teeth at that time, they'd pull the teeth out and throw them in a the box. After that, they go right to the incinerator. Okay, if you're going to work in the Warsaw Ghetto or one of the uh, factories uh, during World War II, this is the passport book. Okay, what's real important I want to show you? Okay, see the stamp there? It's half on the paper and half on the picture. Okay, look at this. I got the stamp. See that? This is the passport book. You'd have to have this to work in a factory. It's proof of who you are and uh, where you came from. Okay guys, it goes on and on and on. Very, very interesting stuff here. Okay, so if you guys want to come, no reservations needed. Show up on a Wednesday, Friday, or Sunday at 10 o'clock. We only do one tour each day and it takes around two hours. And after that, if the weather is good, we rent out machine guns. In fact, this coming weekend, April uh, 13th and 14th, we're renting out 40 to 50 machine guns uh, to the public. We start off the museum with a bang, like every year. Uh, you could come on out, have a good time, bring your video camera and uh, your whole family. This is a family event. And I have t-shirts here, all different size t-shirts, Colorado Springs Military Museum. Uh, they're khaki and green. If you want to order these, uh, just go online, dragonmans.com. You could order the t-shirts. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have small. We have medium, large, extra large, 2X, 3X, and 4X. The reason I don't have small is because I don't want small guys wearing it. What happens is they go out on a Friday and Saturday night. They go to the bar. They get beat up. They're wearing my t-shirt, and it makes me look bad. <laughs> 
I'm just joking. We have small. <laughs> I'm always kidding around. You gotta have fun. I can't get fired. <laughs> okay, guys. I'll see you this summer. You guys are going to be very impressed. I guarantee it.